right into a smoothie. I can't do the smoothie thing. I don't have, I don't own a blender. Oh, okay. Well, I got that Hamilton Beach, it's, and it's got that... I showed you the thing. It's a all-purpose. It's got a food processor attachment. I mean, it's a rudimentary food processor attachment, but it works for what I do. I wonder if I can make a smoothie in my food processor. Uh, I don't know. Probably not. Well, I made the pizza sauce, and it came out good. Smoothie. It was only forty-seven or forty-eight dollars, and you no, know, and it's got that food processor attachment, which I did made that you know carrot, celery, onion thing, and it came out perfect. There you go. See, I don't have, I don't make a lot of the stuff that you do because it's just me. I have to get so many ingredients, and they they would go bad before I would use them again, you know. I hear you. I'm going to uh, look up bananas here. I have a lot of options, you know. We want to, if I want to eat, I'm going to make something. Oh yeah, I mean we all do. You know, but some people just walk down the street and buy a biscuit. I can't do that. All right, bananas here are 49 cents a pound. Okay, and it's 59 cents a pound for organics. That's about right. I figure they're probably not using a lot of bad stuff on the non-organic ones and the... Oh, I got spinach too yesterday. I'm going to start adding that to the smoothies. As I understand, you, you well, I like the taste of spinach, but... I understand you, you can't even taste it in there. Uh, this turns everything green. Oh, only yeah, have two SMU. Yeah, and it's good for you. It's the same with those lentils in that smoothie I had yesterday. It tasted just like a milkshake. I mean, it really, really did. I would have never known lentils are in there, but boy, that added a ton of protein. Yeah. You know what you want for that soy milk? Do you ever price that stuff? Oh yeah, well that's cheap, but the the uh, soy high protein soy milk is like five fifty a, a half a gallon. So uh, that's because it's got all the protein in it. I mean, it's got like four times the protein, and uh, I mean, I'm only going to use it for the smoothies. It only takes a cup, so you know I'm not going to just sit and drink it at that price. Oh okay, yeah, try Walmart. They probably brand some of that stuff. Yeah, well, I was at the shop. The next time I go, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna check it out. It was that Silk brand, you know. I guess that's a pretty much a popular brand. Yeah. Yeah, the Silk uh, almond milk doesn't have the. the pro How come you use almond milk? Okay. I've never tasted it. I've never tasted it. I use the lactate at two percent because I'm lactose intolerant to an extent. In other words, I, I can't drink an eight gallon glass of regular milk. I'll have a problem. But I can have like some cheese. I can have stuff like that without an issue. But I can't drink a whole big glass of milk like that. I use the the two percent, but I, I foam it for the for the uh, you know my mocha pot lattes. Right. It's a shame about Bill's wife. I guess the surgery's delayed because of the of her blood work. Okay, uh, well, uh, 
Okay. Yeah. The doctor put me on prednisone as a test run for five days to see if that helps. He says that's the same stuff they shit you. Well, uh, talk to Mario about it. There's downsides to that, though, if you got to, you don't want to be on that on a regular basis. Well, the main thing is with the steroids is it relieves the pain because it makes the body think there's nothing wrong. But, I mean, that also opens the back door to stuff, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> My ex-wife's got uh, stomach cancer again. She had a op major operation in the hospital for two weeks. And Got like three quarters of her stomach removed. Oh boy. Uh, she had the colon cancer too. I mean, she has that Lynch syndrome, which cancer just sprouts up everywhere in your body. I mean, it's a, it's probably one of the worst things you could possibly have. Yeah, it's had like years ago, she had a total hysterectomy, took everything out. She had a big section of her colon removed uh, about 10 years ago, and now with the stomach. And part of her pancreas and uh, gallbladder was removed. You don't have much left, so and her diet now is extremely uh, restricted until hopefully her stomach will start to stretch again, which she, which happens a lot. And it, uh, but she's got to eat only a very very small amount now at a time, about ten times a day. thing is it's got to be very concentrated protein and stuff because it's got to be easily absorbed by her body now because you don't want it to go right through or else she's not going to get any nutrients. Yeah, well, people pay money to get their stomach removed so to lose weight. And well, she didn't have that issue. She's going to have to have uh, issues now with keeping her weight up. Fortunately, she's always been very, very fit and always exercise and everything on a regular basis. She's a lot taller than me. She's about over five foot nine. She only, she's never been over 140 pounds. Oh, she's got a Vegematic, Vegamix thing. I mean, she's doing, following all the instructions. Oh yeah, well there's, it's very popular now, those, all that smoothie business. Hers is self-cleaning. I didn't ask her how that worked. Hers is Vitamix or something, and she says it's self-cleaning. I didn't ask her exactly what that meant. Are you serious? Oh, okay. Well, see, that's a good idea. I'm going <laughs> to have to try that. I can't wait for my smoothie this morning. When we were out with the Boy Scouts, we had to throw them all our dishes. We would pour a little water in there, stir it around, and get all the food that's out, and then drink it, because you can't just dump it on the ground. The bears will come get you. Oh, that's for sure. The kids are all grossed out about it. And I'm like, yeah, it's just the same thing you just ate. It's oatmeal with water. Just drink it. Yeah, cats do it. Yeah, they're supposed to drink dishwater. Don't put soap in there. Keep the water in. Tony. Good morning, Tony. Hey, Tony. Good morning. Do you notice any directivity on your, your beverage, Tony?
Well, 3 dB is only like half an S unit. I mean, that, that's like nothing. There's such wide bandwidth, uh, beam width, that, uh, you know, you just got to get it in the ballpark. Yeah, well, that's... Uh, the, uh, nearly as important as the front to back uh, because that that's where that's where it makes the biggest difference with a beverage is, is if it's got high front to back then you got to be more careful which way you point it you know? like yeah, the, I'm a hard time no no it's still on uh, you're about half the strength of Ernie I almost can't hear you. You're only an S8. Ernie's about almost 10 over. Oh, yeah, 2S. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ernie, uh, it's a solid 10 over. W2SDR. Yeah, is that to say uh, you find that on your transmitter antenna also? Yeah, you're, um, well, you got that end fed antenna. And, uh, I noticed the same thing last year, Ernie, on on, uh, on Tony. When it gets to be the spring and the summer, he's quite a bit down from from uh, like you and Garrett and uh, Bill. Oh, that's got to be the engine. I just figured out the problem. I was listening on the Because see the beverage is pointed up here, and that end fed antenna, God knows which way that goes. Yeah, I'm been listening on a beverage all morning. Seems to be working good. I'm listening on a beverage on my a cup of coffee here. Yeah, Tony, I don't know what the new guy did. It just uh, I went out there and I redid some connectors and some of that stuff. You know, I didn't do. What makes you say that? That I can switch to receive antenna port three and still copy you. It's leaking from antenna one. And there's nothing connected to antenna three. That's weird. Just the internal leakage in the radio. Do you get any um, ADC, AGC overload? No, I don't. But, but that, that beverage is uh, probably 300 feet away. Okay, yeah. I do, you know, just sitting here talking on 1,400 watts, I don't get any overload. But if I do a two-tone, uh, I'll get ADC overload. Harry said, uh, disconnect all the antennas and try again. I don't get that here. Well, you have your antennas in your amplifier, so it, the leakage could be in your amp. I wouldn't get to it. Ten four three on the amount. Well, I don't know. Uh, that's a good point. Hey, the receiver antennas go right into antenna two or antenna three on the amount. Oh, okay. Uh, hmm. If I go down here and feed it. The bottom, you know, it says RTG2, 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 RTG2,
Yeah, so I guess if you're not going to use a port, I guess if you're not ever going to use a port, a shorting plug in there. Either one would work. Uh, the short would bother me because uh, I actually translated it to a. Come on, live, live, live on the wild side. And I'll put a little bird dummy loader there. I don't know what dummy loader. <laughs> they make these little, you know, 50 ohm loads that just fill right into a beam and see. I just power pop one of them on there and get them around here somewhere. Yeah, you just got to make sure you don't inadvertently transmit because those little things will burn out instantly. Well, same with this beverage. You don't ever want to transmit into it, but it's, it's easy to manage that with this. I don't have you know, a CX-1001. That's it. I don't ever select anything else. That goes over to the uh, the RF kit. Well, I have to be real careful of my isolation. I use those new, I had mentioned before, those MFJ uh, antenna switches, which I think are great because I I use one to switch between two sides of my shack. So I've got 1,500 watts going through that thing, you know? So it's got to have high isolation or I'll blow out the other side of the shack. Bill was trying to do something like that, and he said it wasn't enough isolation. Well, they run 1,500 watts, and I only, um, let's put it this way. I get about an S a 10 over 9 on the Anon, and I'm running 1,500 watts uh, on the uh, other side of the shack. Yeah, okay. I mean, that's, that's some pretty damn good isolation there. And, you know, if I didn't want, if I wanted more, and I've done it before, I put two switches in the line. Yeah, right. That's what I told them. If you want to buy isolation, you use two switches. Yeah, he probably blew that device because he didn't wait. He switched bands and stuff because it, I mean, it takes a half a second, but man, you, you're you on Vox, boy. You can't quick key when it gets in the middle of switching. days. So we're going to take the rest of the month 
we'll see how it works out, but uh, definitely once a month. So we'll see what happens. I, I really enjoyed working in there. It was a lot of fun.